So Descartes' rule of signs reveals that a polynomial whose terms are all positive or all negative can have no real positive zeros. And, you know, that's because there are no sign changes in between there. So we're going to use this idea and talk about something called the upper and lower bound theorem. So the upper and lower bound theorem states, for a positive number p, if f of x is divided by x minus p, and the remainder and the coefficients of the quotient are all positive or all negative, then the zeros of f of x cannot be greater than p. The value of p is then called an upper bound of f of x. Okay, so, you know, you would never try a value bigger than p. You know, if that happened while you were testing, you would never go above that value. There's no point to try. Okay, and so that part's much more useful than the second part. If q is an upper bound of f of negative x, then negative q is a lower bound for f of x. Okay, and so this theorem is just one that to keep in mind when you are testing out your uh, numbers to find your zero for your polynomial. Okay, you're not just going to go about doing this one. We're going to do a couple examples so that you see what you're looking for, but you know, it's just something to keep in mind to help you narrow down the options that you have. Okay, to show the upper and lower bound theorem in action, um, we're going to use this polynomial function. And I'm just going to start synthetic division with 1. Um, and we're going to see where that takes us. Okay, so again, you bring down and multiply, add and multiply, add and multiply, add and multiply, and add. Okay, so, you know, these are not all the same sign. So there's, positive 1 is not a upper bound. Okay, so let's go to the next integer. So bring down and multiply, add, and multiply, add, and multiply, add, and multiply, and add. Okay, and what you should see here is that all of these numbers are positive. Okay, so that tells us that there is no zero that's going to be bigger than two. Okay, it doesn't tell us anything about two. It doesn't tell us about anything about a specific zero. It's just saying that, you know, if you divided by this number and you got all positives, or if these were all negatives, then that becomes your upper boundary. To show uh, about the lower bound of the same function, we first need to evaluate it for negative x, which I've already done here. And you notice some of the signs are different from the original. And we're going to go back through and start with 1 again and see what kind of information we can get. So we bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply and add okay so again we're looking for all the same signs but we don't have all the same signs so one uh, doesn't tell us anything about an upper or a lower bound here so let's move on to two Okay, so bring down and multiply and add and multiply, add and multiply, add and multiply, and add. Okay, and now 
we have all positives, they're all the same sign, okay? And the theorem states that when you do this with a, you know, for the function when evaluated at negative x, that this will be the opposite sign. So really, this is telling us that negative 2 is the lower bound, okay? And remember that from the other one, positive 2 was the upper bound, and so all of the zeros that are going to be produced by the original function, not this one here, but the original function, are between negative 2 and positive 2. Now again, this is going to be something that is just something worth keeping an eye out for, uh, so you don't change all kinds of, or you don't, you're not trying all kinds of different numbers, because you know the original equation had negative 144 as its constant term, and there's all kinds of factors of 144, and so if you're going to go through and just check them all, it might take a long time, and so you know when you're going through them and you run into this situation, then you can stop. Okay, because there's no need to keep going any further.